evening, everyone. We are on the record. This is a municipal council meeting, regular council meeting of the Jersey City Municipal Council. Today is Tuesday, the 10th day of February 2015. We had a scheduled 6 p.m. start. The clock on my cell phone is showing 6.13. May we have a roll call for the commencement of this meeting. Councilperson Kajewski. Here. Yeah. Councilperson Ramchow. Here. Yeah. Councilperson Bajiano. Councilperson Young. Here. Councilperson Osborne. Here. Councilperson Coleman. Here. Councilperson Rivera. Here. Councilperson Waterman. Here. And Council President Lavaro. Here. We have nine members in attendance at 6.13 p.m. Can we kindly rise for a moment of silence, please? Andrea Goodwin, employee at New Jersey City University. Mary Gargiulo, who celebrated her 94th birthday on February 3rd at the Jersey City Medical Center. She was a lifelong resident of Jersey City and the daughter of the late Mary and Charles Pinella and proprietor with her husband of Joe's Market on Summit Avenue for 45 years. Davindra Donneron. Thank you very much. You kindly remain standing as we salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. I got two mics. On behalf of City Council President Lavaro, in accordance with the New Jersey Public Laws of 1975, Chapter 231, the Open Public Meetings Act, also known as the Sunshine Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the posting on the bulletin board of the first floor of City Hall, the annual notice, which is the schedule of meetings and caucuses of the Municipal Council for the calendar year 2015, and filed in the office of the City Clerk on Wednesday, November 26, 2014. In addition, at the time of its preparation, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Thursday, February 5, 2015, at 4 p.m. to the Municipal Council, Mayor, Business Administrator, Corporation Council, and the local newspapers. So I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. Council members, before we go on to our regularly scheduled business. Um, I'm going to need a motion to add 10Z8 through 10Z13 to the agenda, motion. with the exception with the exception of 10Z7, which was withdrawn. Motion. Second. Motion made by Councilperson Rivera, seconded by Councilperson Coleman. On the motion to add 10Z8 through 10Z13 to the agenda, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Ramchow. Aye. Councilperson Bajiano. Aye. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. Council President Lavara. Aye. We have a 9-0 vote to add 10Z8 through 10Z13 to the agenda. Ms. Sean, I'd like yes. to uh, have a motion to defer to 10Z10. I have a motion by Councilperson Rivera to defer to 10Z10. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilperson Osborne. On the motion to defer to 10Z10, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Ramchow. Aye. Councilperson Bajiano. Aye. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. And Council President Lavaro. Aye. Motion carries 9-0 to defer to 10Z10. Council President Lavaro, are you going to read it into the record before yeah. we vote? Sure. Okay. Uh, the resolution uh, entitled uh, Recognizing Frank R. Con Conwell, PS3 Tigers, for establishing February 12, 2015, is JAM World Record Day. Whereas the nationwide school program, JAM, 
Just a Minute brings physical activity and health education to the classroom, is promoted and backed by leading groups such as First Lady Obama's Let's Move, the American Heart Association, the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, NFL Play 60, USDA, National PTA, NBA, FIT, Discovery Education's Energy Balance 101, NASPI, the largest group providing physical activity resources to teachers across America, plus hundreds of state and local groups and organizations with health and wellness initiatives. And whereas Frank R. Conwell PS3 Tigers has implemented daily jammers, including one-minute exercises, along with weekly versions of exercise and play before the bell, also known as Pound TGI Mat PS3, where students arrive to school on Monday at 8, 10 a.m. and work out with Principal Michael, and whereas the Jam World Record Day's purpose is to have as many children and adults around the world to simultaneously take time from their busy lives to participate in a one-minute exercise event. And whereas it is PS3's mission to recruit and encourage as many residents as possible to register with www.jamworldrecord.org and pledge to join the PS3 no. Tigers for the third annual Jam Day, for the Jam World Record on Thursday, February 12, 2015, at 10 a.m., and now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of Jersey City does hereby recognize Frank R. Conwell PS3 Tigers in their dedication to making health and fitness a lifelong daily habit and by being active in promoting Jam World Record Day. Before, before we... Before we continue, we just want to take a vote on it so then we can proceed. On the resolution 10Z10, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Ramchow. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Aye. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. Council President Lavaro. Congratulations and aye. We have a 9-0 vote, unanimous approval of 10-C-10. Can you just state your name for the record? Uh, before every meeting. What do you think? We need the principal here and the rest of the jam people, though. <laughs> hey, Michael Youngstein going to be quiet tonight. Now. Yeah, I spent all of my energy already. 
Can we have everybody back so we can take a picture? Yeah. All right, let's go. Every council meeting is ready to have a family No way. Yep. We are. We're going to have a song. All right. I'm joking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> more like more like a shiny, you know? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, 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 this one, this one. Yeah, I think they do. An airspeed. Yeah, he's last. He's last. Look, tell him he's number 41. And so is Tyrone Benjamin, 40. Juan. Make sure you write down. Thank you for everything. Just for the record, I don't know if I had a camera on me, but Robert needs to know that I did that. I like it. Watch it for the tweets. Yeah. Eddie was swimming. Eddie was swimming. Move. Okay. Rich, you can't bust the move for the life. What do you Excellent. When you get to his age, then... Okay. On to our regular order of business. Right. On to our first reading ordinances. Item 3A, City Ordinance 15-012, an ordinance amending Chapter 3, Administration of Government, Article 5, Office of the City Clerk, to include 3-39, Standards for Naming Streets, and municipality owned property and chapter 296 streets and sidewalks article 6 street name changes repealing section 296-19 in its entirety uh, item 3b city ordinance 15013 has been withdrawn item 3c city ordinance 15 Dash 014, it's an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City adopting amendments to the Col Colgate Redevelopment Plan to alter the height and open space of Block 14507 and make minor design and regulation changes. Item 3D, City Ordinance 15-015, an ordinance granting permission to Willow Avenue Realty Associates, LP, and, and its successors and assigns to improve and use approximately 5-foot by 10-foot portion of the public right-of-way between the 60-foot right-of-way adjacent to Morgan Street and Lot 9, Block 13002 on the official tax assessment map of the City of Jersey City for construction of a six-step stoop entrance stairway which encroaches five feet onto the public right-of-way along Morgan Street, which is a franchise ordinance. Item 3E, City Ordinance 15016 has been withdrawn. Item 3F, City Ordinance 15-017, an ordinance amending Chapter 175, Food Handling Establishments, Article 3, Food Establishments, to create standards for farmers' markets. Chapter 3, Administration, administration of Government, 
Article 9, Department of Public Works, Section 71, Division of Park Maintenance, to amend the approved process for farmer, farmers' markets seeking permission to operate in city parks. Chapter 239, Parks, Section 15, Hours of Operation, permits farmers' markets to create standards for farmers' markets operating in city parks. And Chapter 160, Fees and Charges, Section P, Chapter 175, Foods handling establishments to create a fee for farmers markets. Items 3F, excuse me, items 3A through 3F with the exception of 3B and 3E which have been withdrawn. Councilperson Kajewski. Aye for introduction. Councilperson Ramcho. Aye for introduction. Councilperson Bajiano. Aye for introduction. Councilperson Young. Aye for introduction but uh, uh, 3D and I appreciate the Corporation Council Jeremy and uh, their team to uh, review that their liability coverage $2 million over the 99 years, uh, uh, what are they called, years is, uh, uh, I forgot. What was it? Adjusted for inflation. Jeremy, on the mic, please. Oh, sorry. Inflation adjustment. Yeah, you want an inflation adjustment. And uh, we did speak with uh, the risk manager already about that. And you'll see that there's a replacement ordinance in there. Um, and you'll see on the replacement cover sheet yes. uh, that we identified uh, that the language or in such type as the city risk manager during the term of his franchise. So what that does is it allows the risk manager to adjust it once he feels that the amount is no longer appropriate given increased costs. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. You, you actually, you protect uh, inter of city and the taxpayer. I really appreciate. And the F, uh, I'll say Human Service Department did a great job. We have to all the stockholders together to some ordinance, some every parties have to agree and they're happy with that. Excuse me. So can, we, can, we close, can we close that back door, please? You cannot hear, right? Mm -hmm. Can you just repeat, Councilman? Councilman? Can't you hear me? That's, that's right. better. It's better, right? Okay, I will I. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Touche. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye for introduction. Councilperson Waterman. Aye for introduction. Council, Council President Lavaro. Aye for introduction. City ordinances 3A through 3F with the exception of 3B and 3E, which were withdrawn, are introduced 9-0. On to our second reading ordinances. First second reading ordinance is an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 3, Administration of Government, Article 3, Mayor, and Article um, 12, Department of Health and Human Services of the City of of the Jersey City Municipal Code to move this Office of Senior Affairs to the Department of Health and Human Services. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard? Motion. Second. Motion to close the public hearing made by Councilperson Osborne. Seconded by Waterman. Councilperson Waterman. On the motion to close the public hearing, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Ramcho. Aye. Councilperson Bajiano. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. And Council President. Aye. Motion to close the public hearing carries 9-0. For final consideration and adoption of city ordinance 15005, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Ramcho. Aye. Councilperson Bajiano. Aye. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. And Council President Labarro. Aye. City Ordinance 15-005 is adopted 9-0. On to our second Second reading ordinance, item 4B, City Ordinance 15-006, an ordinance authorizing the transfer of city-owned property located at 362 Summit Avenue within the Journal Square 2060 Redevelopment Area to the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard? Motion. Second. 
Motion made by Council Person Waterman, seconded by Council Person Osborne to close the public hearing. Council Person Kajewski. Aye. Council Person Ramcho. Aye. Council Person Bajiano. Aye. Council Person Young. Aye. Council Person Osborne. Aye. Council Person Coleman. Aye. Council Person Rivera. Aye. Council Person Waterman. Aye. Council President Lavaro. Aye. Motion carries 9-0 to close the public hearing. For final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 15-006, Council Person Kajewski. Aye. Council Person Ramcho. Aye. Council Person Bajiano. Uh, Aye. Whoa. Council Person Young. I think uh, Richard Bridger and Council Richard were not finished yet. Okay. He's finished. You finished? Yeah. Okay. Council Person Young. No. There were 65 units building at that location without parking. I cannot accept. That area already parking is issue, but through the, this project, the 65 units going to make it worse in the parking situation. So I both no. Okay. Sean. Yes. No, Sean. I got interrupted by something on the... Okay. On. So you're changing your vote to no. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. Council President. I vote aye. City Ordinance 15-06 is adopted 7-2 with Council Members Baggiano and Yun voting no. On to our next second reading ordinance. Uh, um, item 4E. City Ordinance 15-009, an ordinance authorizing the cancellation and reimbursement of taxes pursuant to NJSA 54-4-3-6C for property owned by Margaret Anna Kuzak Care Center, Inc., and located at 251 Baldwin Avenue on Block 09606, Lot 8. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All right. On that motion, I'm going to give it to Council President Lavaro, and I'm going to give the second to Council Person Osborne. Yeah, she on top tonight. On the motion to close the public hearing, Council Person Kajewski. Aye. Council Person Ramcho. Aye. Council Person Baggiano. Council Person Young. Aye. Council Person Osborne. Aye. Council Person Coleman. Aye. Council Person Rivera. Aye. Council Person Waterman. Council President. Aye. Motion carries 9-0 to close the public hearing for final consideration and, and adopt adoption of City Ordinance 15-009. Council Person Kajewski. Aye. Council Person Ramcho. Aye. Council Person Baggiano. Aye. Council Person Young. Aye. Council Person Osborne. Aye. Council Person Coleman. Aye. Council Person Rivera. Aye. Council Person Waterman. Aye. And Council President Lavaro. Aye. City Ordinance 15-009 is adopted 9-0. On to our last se second reading ordinance is an ordinance authorizing, excuse me, an ordinance approving a five-year tax exemption pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 40A semicolon 21-1 exec and section 304-12 of the Municipal Code for the property designated as Block 19006, Lot 33, on a city tax map and more commonly known by street address of 372 Pacific Avenue. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard? Motion. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Council President Lavaro, second by Council Person Osborne. I'm giving it to the loudest. On the motion to close the public hearing, Council Person Kajewski. Aye. Council Person Ramcho. Aye. Council Person Baggiano. Council Person Young. Aye. Council Person Osborne. Aye. Council Person Coleman. Aye. Council Person Rivera. Aye. Council Person Waterman. Aye. Council Person President Lavaro. Aye. Motion to close the public hearing carries 9-0 for final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 15-011. Council Person Kajewski. Aye. Council Person Ramcho. Aye. Council Person Baggiano. Aye. Council Person Young. Aye. Council Person Osborne. Aye. Council Person Coleman. Aye. Council Person Rivera. Aye. 
Councilperson Waterman. Aye. And Council President Lavaro. Aye. City Ordinance 15-011 is adopted 9-0. On to our favorite portion of the meeting is the public speaking portion. As you can see in front of the podium, you will see a clock that has five minutes. We'll be keeping strict law to that. So once you hear the buzzer, you are done. With that being said, first speaker, Laverne Washington. And I will not stop the clock until you start speaking. I'm positive. You have five minutes. Okay. You ready? You're on the clock. Typically, don't uh, allow time to be uh, traded, or um, well, I say typically we don't. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Um, excuse me. You know, I just as a normal practice, we, we're not allowed to trade time. If you want to be on the speakers list, we're on the speakers list out of an abundance of respect for the speakers that spoke. We let them do that uh, this once time, but really it's not a practice we should allow or create a precedent for. Okay. Okay. What's that? Thank you. Thank you. Council person, did you want to? Um, I'm looking for my aide right now. Sir. Um, this is, sir, I I'm looking for my aide right now. 
Um, can you step over here and I'll talk to you for a second. Um, I'm the councilwoman for Ward F, and some of it is in Ward F. A lot of it is in Ward B and A. However, I would like to sit down and talk to you and see if we can come up with uh, some suggestions about what can be done, okay? Well, I'm the councilwoman. I've lived in Ward F for 67 years, and I've watched the change of times both ways. So maybe we can sit down together and figure out a way that uh, the community and myself can implement something that might make things a little better. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. So, Sean, going forward. Say again? Going forward. Yes. Um, and, and so your, your, your message is so important, so I didn't want to interrupt that. But uh, uh, the speakers have to be signed up uh, prior to speaking. Okay. His name is on the list? No, we, we don't share time. Laverne, we don't share time. It's a, well, uh, this council is not, <laughs> hasn't done it since, this council hasn't done it, and we're going to hold by that rule. We're moving on. Moving on. Next speaker, Stacy Jackson. Not here. Okay. Notre reporter. No Notre. I'm so Notre sorry. Reporter. Notre reporter. Not here. Here. Jamie Vasquez. Not here. No. Roberto Valentin. No? He's here? Well, he missed his, okay. He's here. Roberto Valentin. Roberto Valentin? Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Valentine, Sir, can you speak directly into the microphone? Bring the mic down to you. There you go. Much better. Okay. For the next speaker, and before I go down the list, speakers list, if if you follow the agenda, please follow your name and make your way to the front after the next person speaks. So we're not looking for you out in the hallway. Thank you very much on that, Daniel Sicardi. Thank you. 
Okay, one at a time. So, so Dan, let me, let me just explain that I had this conversation with you over the phone. Um, I actually cut my vacation short to come back to make sure this item got pulled from the agenda's planning. And I set up a meeting which is going to take place uh, uh, March uh, 7th. Uh, it's going to take place at the Hangalo Center from 12 because they have yoga class in the morning, 12 to 2. Um, I approve, I, I did a letter today which is going to go out to all the residential in the historic district. Uh, it's going to say the date of the meeting in Hangalo Center, the date that the item will be on the agenda on, on the planning board, and a link to the website that you could go and review all the documents. So I got that done. And I could say I replied to over 100 email and 67 phone call when I was on vacation. And I cut my vacation short just to make sure this issue got handled. Daniel, Daniel, Thank you. hold on. Mr. Sicardi, hold on. Have you been in touch with Patrick Finn? Well, call me tomorrow. I'll give you his number. He's got a group over in the Bergen area. That's fighting this. I've been involved with him for the last month. Get a hold of me. I'll give you his number. Get involved with Patrick Finn. Okay, next public speaker, Martin Tirado. Tirado. Sorry. Ooh. This one? Martin Tirado. Next in line. See next in line. <laughs> Folks, between uh, speakers, if we could keep it uh, to a minimum so we can keep the speakers moving. Next Next speaker, Keith, Keith Twyman. Twyman. Hmm. You could speak directly into the.
Thank, Thank you. you. Michael, <laughs> Michael Harris, Michael Harris. Okay, if the, um, as each speaker, if, if, if you've seen the list, if you're next up, if you make your way up to the front, that way we can continue to move the speaker list. We have a long speaker list, folks. It's over, well over 50 people, as I understand it. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Michael Harris. I'm a firefighter here in Jersey City. Amy Barrett. I'm trying to tear up this because it can be so much to me. My son passed away.
Your time is up, sir. Your time is up, sir. <laughs> Angela Dominich. Angela? Not here. Jennifer Calaza. If, uh, if you're uh, coming up to speak, if you're anticipating being a speaker, uh, if you can come up to the first row, and that way we can get you right up. Thank you, Angel. Jennifer. Philip Carrington, Philip Carrington, not here, no. okay, Bruce Austin, Thank you. 
Bruce. 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 If you could just back up a little bit. There you go. Thank you, sir. Ben Sierra? Ben Sierra? Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't see you, buddy.
Brian Mills. Next. Brian Mills, not here. Derek. Press. What's that? No. Derek's not here either. Peter Barnes.
Your time is up, sir. Sir, your time is up. Can I comment? Yeah. Okay. okay. Folks. Andrew D. Mateo. Hold on, hold on, before we proceed. Um, so, is that, is that clock working? I didn't hear the bell go off. Did the alarm go off? Is that clock working, Sean? We didn't not. hear it because they were Okay, so, Sean, Sean, just so we're not, can you just keep track of the time, please? I will. On this. Secondly, secondly, I think, I um, can speak for the rest of the council on this, that we, all, none of the members of the council think Danny Rivera is a racist at all. Um, in fact, he's a generous and, and giving man, as all of you have said. Um, what, I, what I do want to say, yeah, and I'll let the other council people respond before other people speak as well, um, but I, I want to speak directly to what Mr. Barnes said. Um, if I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Barnes, but I believe you have a couple of contracts with the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency on some work doing with the city. I so, every single developer. Yeah, so um, I think, uh, now your, your time is up, Mr. Barnes. We can talk about it later. But your time is up. You had you had your five minutes. We we don't. I I, could, I think I can say for myself. I'm not going to take your slings and arrows that are unfounded, um, completely unfounded, because I know that I've sat on that Jersey City Redevelopment Agency and approved the uh, the resolutions and the contracts that have appropriated money um, and to you. And I send your name to every single developer and CC you too. Your time is up. We have to move on with our conversation. If you want to talk some more, we'll talk after the meeting. Uh, we can schedule a time to talk, okay? Andrew D. Mateo. Pat Le LeGuig. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Le Lanier? Laguerre? Laguerre? Not here. <laughs> Gilbert Moore. He's here. Good evening, man. Um, I would just like to say, uh, Mr. Rivera, myself, I'm Shane, I love that I came out and I hosted you. I know you for over 20 years. You work with the birds and everything. Um, it's time to just talk about stuff that I'm not talking about. And that's not, that's not even that's so hard for you. Um, you know, get back to it, you know, which is all I'm saying is, it seems that, you know, you guys always want the Jersey City, you want to make Jersey City better, but I guess Jersey City contract is a bit smaller than the club. He wants, he wants, he wants some value at home. Fear. If we want to make sure this is better, you got to keep, you got to keep the job in the house. But it seems that the day of the help is that you got to have to give them the 35 years of age, so it's all set up and all that jazz now. No other place you must do. And it's sad that you have constituents who are told that they don't even know who you are. That's sad. And, and, and I know who you guys heard it. It's not the first time that she had heard that she had, you know, the process that we don't know who the council of the Lord is. I think I know the council of the Lord is, this is a girl. Because you're not the only one that's born, she's not. But, um, you know, we have a relationship with the great nation. And, you know, it's funny to find a lot of things on the internet. And, uh, you know, some of the people did a job and one of the people, somebody said before that, Ron Schroeder did a lot of fun. He doesn't need to hold a degree in the recreation matter. All his jobs were working in Wall Street as a comic person. So if you get a kid and go to the auditions, if you have the top of the top, the top of the top, you can go get a job. It's a lot of things going on here. He did not see it. But you know something? When somebody starts talking about 
I just heard it. David Henry? Steve Hyman, Steve Hyman, Steve Hyman, Steve Hyman's here for, for Danny too.
Which side are you on? <laughs> you help me and my opponent. <laughs> In the same election. <laughs> Time is up. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Steve Pickney. Steve Pickney. Come on up, Steve. Good evening. Because I don't know. 
If you just mind just raising the mic a little bit to you, towards you. Hogan.
Mr. Hogan, can you step back a little bit? inadvertently skipped uh, speaker Aurelius Ingram. Aurelius Ingram. I, my apologies for that. Ooh. Aurelius is not here. Oh, he okay. Jason Berg. Mm. Not here. Let's keep going. Okay. Hortense, Hort, Hortensia Peterson. I hope I'm not butchering Hortensia your name. Hortensia Peterson.
Omar Salgado. Omar. Arnold Williams. Oh, Omar. Great.
time is up, sir. The time is up, sir. Arnold Williams. Mary Cruz. Hi, Mary.
Thank you. Luis Mosquito Gonzalez. Oh. Councilman? Yes. Hello? Folks, folks, can we get some order? Yes. Excuse Before me. Before you proceed, um, Mosquito. Yes. None of the council members believe that Daniel Rivera is a racist. I'm telling you now, he's a wonderful man. He's a work for the community. So they have to prove that. But right. Councilman Daniel Rivera and myself, we mm -hmm. discussed one of the issues regarding for 2014 summer use job. Right. Now, they have an issue, actually. Last year, they hired 410 kids. From the 410 kids, 62 percent is black. I like to be a and the mayor's of Supreme writing the piece of paper. 24 percent is Spanish. Other is a 7 percent. White is a 2 percent. Asian is a 1 percent. Mm -hmm. Now, if you analyze by word, 22 for the 24 percent District A. 9% from the District B, 6% mm -hmm. from the C. My district only has a 6%. E district, which is a Candice Osborne, is 8%. Mm -hmm. F has a 47% kids come from that. So actually, Daniel River and myself, they have some issue. When we talk about job, we're looking for job equal opportunity. It should be not described by race. So when we look at all those numbers, that department has issue, that leadership has a problem. So that's why I told the last council meeting there was some issue that department should be made of, should be looking into that issue. If this issue not correct the problem, probably next council meeting, I print a resolution to demand change of leadership in that department. So please, one thing I know is that Georgia City is a beautiful city. We come from the all of the world. The people work so hard to support the family. And the, none of the council people as a racism is not a good gist. I'm uh -huh. Korean come from the far from here. Right. So please, take away that kind of you know, mentality. Right. If we have a problem, some people use that race and try to get to their own benefit. So please, there are only few people always cause problem. I hope people understand that fact and we try to make sure that there's some change required in that department. Okay, Ms. Gonzalez. Just, can you just back up a little bit from the mic? Thank you.
What's that? Daddy. I mean, <laughs> folks. Yeah. Daddy, that's uh, your call, I guess, but, uh, Daddy. yeah. Closer to the mic. Shoppers. Matt, if 
I can just interrupt. So, uh, offic officially, are you here on behalf of Ryan Strother? No, no, no. Okay, I just want to make sure. I want to make clear. Okay. Okay, continue, continue. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that Folks, let's not engage in a back. Matt! Wait, sir! Matt! Out of order! Matt! Out of order! Matt! Sir! Address Matt. the council! Sir! Matt. Sir, you have to address the council! Bring him back here! Your time is up! Your time is up! Dawn Felton! Folks, there's not going to be any no outbursts. Well, respect every speaker when they speak. Folks, Matt! Matt, enough. Don't Folks, respect every speaker when they speak. No outbursts. Thank you. Dawn Felton, not here. Yvette Gatan. Yvette, can you speak into the microphone? Mm -hmm. Bring it to you. Got it.
I just want to clarify what I just want to clarify one thing though no, it's okay that so no one has on this council you said you. what you've done to Danny right. for the viewing audience I want to make it very clear as well as everyone in the audience no one in this city council if I can Yvette, if I can if I can finish speaking no one in this council has done anything to Danny whatever those flyers were that were put out there I think I could safely say that no one in this council had anything remotely to do with or connected to distributing those. It's hurt all of us. So. And Yvette, one more thing. Just because we have a black president doesn't mean people are not racist. <laughs> all right? I just want to say that. Because I'm black. It is. Francisco Piera.
Thank you. Thank you. Sharon Ford. Sharon Ford. Sharon? Oh, Shavon. Because he took, because we inadvertently allowed Laverne to use his time, and so now he's taking this advantage to, uh, since he's on the list, to speak again, right? Okay. It's hurting them. It's killing these kids. I don't have to. 
Thank you. Louis LeBron. What's that? Siobhan Ford. Right. Siobhan. No, no, she was asking your name. I'm sorry. Yep. Good evening.
and the president of the But take a look at the people behind you. Your time is up, sir. You're not. You're not the last one. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Tyrone Benjamin. Phil, you, you were called earlier. You, you weren't here. Yeah, I'm sorry, Phil. You can talk to us. You can talk to us afterwards individually. Okay. We'd have to let everybody come. Yeah. On. There are other people that missed their name too, so that means. Now, Phil, you weren't here for a while. Here, you were one of the first people called. Yeah. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, that's the rule. Those are the rules that we've established. You're well aware of them, because it's not the first time this has happened. So, um, for those who know, Phil's here up frequently at the meeting, so a regular. So you know the rules.
building a 95 store. And then let the government get the tax pay. So if you want to put anything and hold the government accountable to put the Jersey in place this type of work? Yeah. Can anybody up there yeah. answer that question? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, look, um, why don't you finish your remarks and then we'll respond, okay? Okay. Um, one more thing. Danny, I knew you before you got into the council, you know. I gave my wife a kid first time I met you to the hospital. And you know my wife, she had me, I gave her a kid, and we had to come to the hospital. And nobody could take her blood because she had these little tiny things. They would move over. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So we, we have a um, we have a a office that um, is charged with monitoring and ensuring enforcement with our project labor agreements. Um, I, I will. Um, you're not the first person to come here, so I'm going to ask the business administrator at our next council caucus meeting if we can have the uh, individuals who are part of that office to report very specifically about our current project labor agreements, the status of that, how many people have been employed, um, local residents, minority, and women, and to present that report in advance of the caucus meeting, not at the caucus meeting, as well as to be at the caucus meeting to explain their, their findings. Okay? Okay, no, thank you. We'll get on top of that. All right. Let me add to what the council president mentioned to that. I think everybody should be aware of that. From the 2008 till 2008, so almost 10 years, they have a disparity study made it. All the tax of between 2000 and 2008, minority business, only 9%, 9.8%, they got tax abatement project job, and the woman is only 0.9%. Meantime, 43% minority people, they work related construction jobs. So we all counts be aware that we not get a fair share of people who live in Georgia City. That's why this council and the city actually top of that issue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So if, if I can just interject, so we don't want to continue the dialogue because we have a couple more speakers. But um, th those numbers you cite are, are pre-2013. Uh, and um, we, we now have a – they weren't being monitored previously. Um, I think most people would admit that, that there was no monitoring, not just of that, but also of collections and so forth. And so we now have an enforcement division. We'll get that information. Make sure it's PLAs as well as PECAs. Okay. I will just add that already efforts have been made to uh, start looking at that PLA agreement and that PECA agreement, and I, I want to give credit to Chico Ramshaw, who was really the first one to bring this issue to the fore, and, 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 and as we said to Chico, is what we'll say to all of you, is, is that eventually we got to uh, strike a committee to really look at how we're going to strengthen that language uh, to, to make sure that we get as many jobs and opportunities for, for Jersey City residents. Uh, Jeremy. Also, we should have Pat Kelleher there to talk about the minority recruitment right. program that he's done. And he's doing some really great work. Just newly started uh, initiatives to bring in local residents and minority local residents to get them into the trades so that they can take part in all in the work that's happening here in Jersey City. And it's a, it's a work in progress, but it, it'll continue, uh, and, and, and it's going to require everyone to, to, to participate in making that language stronger and then holding the developers accountable to, uh, to making sure that they're, they're doing their fair share. I think he should send uh, all of us on the council uh, an email uh, when is the program? What date? So we could have a. Uh, I think he uh, did that already. They did send us. Uh, so did, uh, the way we sent us information about the next program, so forth. Is to give us 
the statistics on what's going on. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I will definitely reach out to the compliance officer. I'm not sure what data they have because uh, of the previous administration. They weren't really um, constituted the right way, but hopefully they'll have something for us. Uh, and I do want to point out, too, because it's also very important that Diane Coleman is chairing the Closing Study Committee, uh, which is the foundation for all the work that we're going to do to improve in this area. That's step one. And her group has been meeting on Friday afternoons working diligently to get us to a strategic plan to start implementing these things. But there's a process that has to be followed, and, and we're well down the road, which is something that you guys as a, as a council and the mayor have, have taken huge steps forward, especially when we consider how long that study sat. So b back to the initial point, and just to reinforce that the, looking for information at the next meeting with providing specific data and statistics with regard to enforcement of our project labor agreements, and PECA's performance employment contracting agreements. Thank you. Okay, our last speaker is Sean Trice. Yeah. Say that with the council, you know. Yeah. yeah I'm not, not going to do it now. Yeah. What was the name? This is just not the place for all of that. Mm -hmm. Sean? Good evening. Thank you, sir. I need a break. Yeah, yep. let's continue. Well, uh, Danny, Danny. Yes, sir. Oh. A couple of words. 
So let me address just a couple of issues before I uh, give you a five-minute spiel. I think you guys could time it. No, I'm just playing. Uh, to my counsel, uh, Diane, you're a hard worker in Ward F, and I just want you to know that. Yeah, I passed out almost a 1,000 applications for that summer yes. program. That's why yeah. there were so many African-American children applications submitted. That's why. And you're a hard worker, and, and, and I love you for that. To my counsel, uh, I just want you guys to know that they have been supportive of me, yes. you know, during this time. Uh, whether or not it was public or not, you know, but, you know, with, with, within our city atmosphere, in the council, they have been supportive, 100 percent. Now, to address everybody that came here, I really commend your advocacy. I appreciate that, and I thank you passionately for what you did today. Uh, to address that very, very, very bad, tasteless flyer, hey, listen, as you can see, I have a track record that stuff like that doesn't really bother me much. You know, Terrence McDonald has been dying for me to say something else, but, you know, I said, listen, you know, it's like a pebble trying to knock down a brick wall. Somebody throwing a pebble trying to knock down a brick wall. <laughs> One thing I can say is uh, I really hope that the, uh, that the drafters of this flyer would watch the city council in channel one <laughs> and uh, I could address them by saying thank you for allowing me to look at yet a level of politics through a different angle and it allows me to make sure I have a different guard on and uh, with the support of this city council and the support I have, I have of all of you that showed me your love, listen, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So, with that said, I think that if we didn't have so many speakers, we probably would have broken the record today with uh, council meeting of 30 minutes but <laughs> once again from the bottom of my heart I really want to thank my family friends and supporters that came out to me for me today to show me love thank you very much Okay, let's proceed with our regular business. Okay. Any questions on petitions to communication 6A through 6T? Hearing none, there are no officer communications. We have reported directors 8A and 8B. Any questions? Hearing none, moving along. On a vote for our claims in addendum number one, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Ramchow. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Ladies and gentlemen, if you exit, please exit quietly. We still have the rest of the meeting to get through. Thank you very much. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. Council President Navarro. Aye. Claims in addendum number one are approved 9-0. On to our resolutions. Folks, as you depart, um, please exit quietly. The council still has regular business to conduct. Thank you. Thank you. On items 10A through 10J, with the exception of 10E, which has been withdrawn, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Rancho. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. 
Council President Lavaro. Aye. Items 10A through 10J, with the exception of 10E, are approved 9-0. Items 10K through 10U, with the exceptions of 10O through 10S, which have been withdrawn. Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Councilperson Ramchow. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Councilperson Young. Aye. Councilperson Osborne. Aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. Councilperson Waterman. Aye. And Council President Lavaro. Aye. Items 10K through 10U, with the exceptions of 10O through 10S, are approved 9-0. Items 10V through 10Z4, Council Person Kajewski. Aye. Council Person Ramcho. Aye. Council Person Baggiano. No on Z4. And I on the rest? The rest, yes. Thank you. Council Person Young. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to be clear on that. Did you go through Reso uh, uh, 15078? Yes. That, that reso, the council asked us to do some additional work. They wanted us to check that reso with, let's see if the JCRA or someone else could play a role with that. That was with, supposed to be withdrawn. I, Sorry, that reso was, was, was withdrawn. So if we could just do a motion, we can 10F? 10F. 10F. 10F yeah. resolution 15078. I'm sorry, they missed that on me. Yeah. They were supposed to, because the council asked us to do some right. work on that. So let me recap that vote. Items 10A through 10J, with the exception of 10E and 10F, that right. have been withdrawn. Okay. They are approved 9-0. Thank you. So we're back at the... Z4. 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 The vote. Except... I say yes, except the Z1. I'm sorry, you need a microphone, Deputy Mayor. It's not working. Sean needs a microphone back. What are we voting on? 
Aye. No on Z9, I and all the rest. No on Z9, I and all the rest.